5.5 Linearization and Differentials Linear Approximation In our study of the derivative, we have frequently referred to the tangent line to the curve at a point. What makes that tangent line so important mathematically is that it provokes a useful representation of the curve itself if we stay close enough to the point of tangency. We say that differentiable curves are always locally linear, a fact that can be best appreciated graphically by zooming in at a point on the curve. Uh, we don't do explorations. Definition, linearization. If f is differentiable at x equals a, then the equation of the tangent line, l of x equals f of a plus the derivative times x minus a, defines the linearization of f at a. The approximation f of x is approximately l of x is a standard linear approximation of f at a. The point x equals a is the center of the approximation. Now really, this is uh, the linearization, the y. We have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It's really here, but, but they've added the y1 over. So here, right here, is sitting the y1. Uh, so really, we have l of x minus f of a equals the derivative of x, or not derivative of, but uh, derivative of a times x minus a. Well, that's y2 minus y1 equals m times x2 minus x1. It's just the equation of the tangent line, but we say it's the linearization. Because if you pick a point that's tangent to a curve and you look at its uh, tangent line, locally a graph is linear no matter how much it curves. So if you zoom in enough, the graph starts to look like a line. Well, in this one, we're asked to find the linearization of f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 15 at x equals 2. Well, let's find the point. So we have 2 comma something. 4 minus 4 is 0, and then we have negative 15. The derivative, the slope, we want to find the slope, so let's take the derivative. f of x equals 2x minus 2. And we're evaluating this at x equals 2 which is equal to 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. Well now, the linearization is really y minus, y plus 15 equals 2 times x minus 2. But instead of saying y, we have L of x. We have the linearization equals 2 times x minus 2 and then minus 15. And we could find uh, the, the slope intercept form of this, of course, so we have 2x minus 4 minus 15, so the linearization is 2x minus 19. Now we're saying that this curve is represented by the line 2x minus 19 as long as you stay really close to 2. When you start getting away from 2, like way over here, this line is a really bad approximation for the curve over here. But if we're close to an x value of 2, the line approximated, approximates the equation uh, uh, fairly accurately. Differentials. Leibniz used the notation dy dx to represent the derivative of y with respect to x. The notation looks like a quotient of real numbers, but is really a limit of quotients in which both numerator and denominator go to 0, without actually equaling 0. That makes it tricky to define dy and dx as separate entities. Uh, see the margin notes if you'd like. Since we really only need to define dy and dx as formal variables, we define them in terms of each other so that their quotient must be the derivative. Definition, differentiables, differentials. Let y equals f of x be a differentiable function. The differential dx is the independent variable and differential dy is dy equals f prime of x times dx. Well, what they're saying is we have this derivative dy dx and that's equal to the derivative of some function. Well, you can treat these differentiables like uh, separable uh, variables. So these cancel out and you get dy, the, differentiable for, the differential for y is uh, f prime of x or the derivative times the differential for x. Finding the, di the differential dy. Find the differential dy and evaluate dy for the given values of x and dx. So we have letter A. The function is x to the fifth plus 37x. x is equal to 1, so we're looking at this at x equals 1, and they're saying that the small change in x is 0 0.01. So on letter A, 
dy dx is equal to 5x to the fourth plus 37. Now we will evaluate uh, this, well, well let's separate it first. So let's multiply uh, both sides by dx. So the slight change in y, the change in y is equal to f 5x to the fourth plus 37 and then times a very small change in x. And usually these differentials represent very tiny numbers. dy is equal to 5 times 1 to the fourth plus 37 and then times 0 0.01 which is 42 times 0 0.01 which is equal to 0.42. Letter B. We have y equals sine of 3x. We are going to evaluate this at pi and the differential for x is negative 0 0.02. We have dy dx is equal to 3 times the cosine of 3x and so dy is equal to 3 cosine of 3x and all that times dx which is equal to 3 cosine of 3 times pi and then we'll multiply that by negative 0 0.02. 3 times cosine of 3 pi is 3 times negative 1 and then times negative 0 0.02 we have negative 3 times negative 0 0.02 uh, that's equal to uh, 0 0.06 with letter C we have 1 plus dy dx is equal to the first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first now let's uh, minus over the x so we can take a dy dx out of uh, 1 minus x and that's equal to y minus 1 because we're going to minus the 1 over. dy dx is equal to y minus 1 over 1 minus x. And we will evaluate this at uh, the point 2 comma something but we need that something. So let's plug the 2 in for x. We have 2 plus y equals 2y. Uh, that means y is also equal to 2 because we'd minus the y over, we get y equals 2. That's equal to 2 minus 1 over 1 minus 2, which is 1 over negative 1. So the derivative is negative 1, but then we'd multiply all that by dx. So we're multiplying times. 0 0.05 and that is equal to negative 0 0.05. Estimating change with differentials. Suppose we know the value of differentiable function f of x at a point a and we want to predict how much this value will change if we move to a nearby point a plus dx. If dx is small, f and its linearization l at a will change by nearly the same amount. Since the values of l are simple to calculate, Calculating the change in L offers a practical way to estimate the change in F. Well here we have A, F of A. We have the point of tangency and we have this tangent line to F of X. Now if we have this uh, small change in X, then we're going to have uh, this change overall in Y. When DX is a small change in X, the corresponding change in the linearization is precisely the derivative of F differential estimate of change. Let f of x be differentiable at x equals a. The approximate change in the value of f when x changes from a to a plus x is approximately the derivative of f which is equal to f prime of a times d of x. Well let's look at this mathematically. Estimating change with differentiables. The radius r of a circle increases from 10 to 10.1. Use the derivative of a to estimate the increase in the circle's area, a. Compare this estimate with the true change in a and find the approximation error. We don't usually worry about approximation error. The area of a circle is pi r squared. And we're saying that the derivative of a with respect to r is equal to 2 pi r. Well, the change in the area is equal to 2 pi r times the change in the radius. And we're saying this is approximately equal. 
This is equal to 2 pi times 10. And the change in the radius is going from 10 to 10.1. So that's a change of 0.1. That's equal to uh, 20 pi times 0.1. So we're looking at a change of 2 pi, which is equal to, let's go with, uh, well, let's do this. Let's go 20 times pi, oops, oops, I missed pi, let's go back, pi times 0.1. That's equal to approximately 6.283, which is 2 pi. Then it says compare this estimate with the true change. So we have area equals pi times 10 squared, and we'll subtract the two when we take uh, pi times 10.1 squared, and we'll see what the true change is. So let's take uh, 10.1 squared times pi, and we can subtract pi times 10 squared. And the true change is 6.314. So the change in A is equal to 6.3146. So this is an approximate amount of change. This is the actual change. Estimating the Earth's surface area. Suppose the Earth were a perfect sphere and we determined its radius to be 3,959 plus or minus 0.1 miles. What effect would the tolerance of plus or minus 0.1 miles have on our estimate of the Earth's surface area? The surface area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared. So the derivative of a with respect to r is equal to 8 pi r. So the difference in area or surface area of a sphere is equal to 8 pi r times the change in the radius. Now the change in the radius is going to be the error that we could possibly have. So this is equal to 8 pi times the radius, which is 3,959, and then times the possible area, which is 0.1. We have 8 times pi times 3,959, and then times 0.1. This is equal to 9,950.052 uh, square miles. So if we're off by 0.1 on what we think the radius could be, then the surface area is going to be off by 909 or 9950 miles square miles approximately